What up, Spookboxers? I am once again asking for your support to a podcast entirely unrelated to world events, but laser focused on horror and otherwise odd films by three people who refuse to reveal themselves on an increasingly visuals based platform. And I oops. This week, as ever, I'm joined by Connor. Hi, how's it going? And Daph. Big up the Spookbox. And our mate Matt as a special guest. Hey, yo. So, today we're diving into Dark Water, the 2002 mm. moody and damp film by Daddy of J-Horror, Hideo N- Nakata. Jesus Almost Christ. Got it. Oh, that yeah. spooked and shook me by way of being spooky and sad. We'll be asking questions and stuffs, but first up, first impressions. All right, am I going to go first? Yeah, Connor, you go first. Right, okay. So, I think, obviously, you all know this very clearly, but um, this film really freaked me out Mm -hmm. and you know on second viewing i know much more clearly why it freaked me out i think we kind of had this uh, the first time i watched it you you sort of figured this out but look i grew up raised by a single mother Mm. yeah yeah not that that's sad did you also have a a small ghost hide their backpack in your backpack funny you should say that (laughs) Uh, no, um, just trying to see where it's relevant. No, I'm kidding. No, no, I was just I was brought up by a single mum, so and I I was uh, very bad at making sure that my mum knew where I was at all times. So mm. uh, watching this film, I really had the, you know I think it's it's a it's a really interesting horror because it doesn't try to get you with uh, jump scares. Mm. You know, not that you need jump scares in horror. There's a couple of really good jump scares. In yeah, there. yeah, I would say so. Um, but you know. More, there's this feeling of of dread, mm-hmm. except sometimes it's pierced with like an anxiety, and it's that anxiousness that really gets me about this film. The fear of not knowing where your child is. And I don't have kids now, but it's it's a nostalgia thing for me of that of mm-hmm. feeling like I let my mum down. Mm-hmm. You know, knowing that just being a child sometimes can end up causing people distress and causing people all kinds of hurt. You know, so for me, that's the the reason the film really affected me. Mm-hmm. But um, so it's hard to say that, like, I wouldn't say that I love this film. I think it's an excellent film, but, like, it's it's something I can't, like, uncomplicatedly, you know, mm. love. I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily choose to watch it, do you know what I mean? Well, it sounds like it really spoke to you, at least. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What about you, Dan? What about me? Um, I really like this film. I think I would maybe go as far as saying it's one of my favorite experiences watching a horror film full stop i think there's a few things i thought about i thought about this morning i think maybe it sort of dates it slightly i think one of my issues being the the, you know there aren't very many uh jump scares in the film Mm. but there's one in particular that i don't think is very effective and i think it really pulled me out of the sort of this film that's supposed to be about a sort of mood this yes. constant use of water, this sort of very oppressive environment. There's one particular jump scare that really pulled me out of it. And I sort of Can we try that. guess? I, yeah, I wonder which one it is. Yeah. I was Do you want to ha- give a guess? Or should I just... Was it the one later? on the security camera? No. Oh, okay. Well, it, oh, can I Oh, no, guess, on you or? go. Yeah. Have a guess. Was it the, the creature, the girl punching the water? Nailed tank? it. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely was that one. Really? That rubbish. I... Yes, and I think it just didn't need to be in this film. She's not a strong ghost in that way. Like, she's, you know... Yeah, I mean, even if she is, I mean, I I don't know that we needed to really, I don't know, get into all of that. Right, I'm wagging my finger here like What what are you wagging your finger about? Right, so I was thinking the exact same thing. I was thinking that that CGI is rubbish. Mm -hmm. Why do we have this wee girl ghost suddenly being strong? And because the, um, the knocking... Yes. The knocking on the side of the tank is mm-hmm. so ominous, mm-hmm. yeah. so effective. That so is, scary, it, you know. it's sickening. It's just really, really spooky. Yeah. But then here's the thing about horror, mm-hmm. I reckon. Go on. Horror always needs to have this kind of catharsis to it. Payoff. Right. But that scene is laced into the scene with the daughter in the bathroom, right? Yeah. There's a jump scare there as well, sort of. There's a sort of release mm. there as well with the with the um, with the ghost coming out of the bathtub. Yeah. Mm. So my argument is that it's just too we, for some reason we have two You've got release look, two cathartic releases in quick succession, and I yep. don't think that needs to happen. Yep. Another thing maybe is that I find the music at times, especially at the very end, incredibly melodramatic. I was going to say, and I, I mean, thought there's that. nothing wrong with melodrama, but there's something about 
the sweeping strings and the sort of heavy temp beats that I couldn't <laughs> really get behind. Are you going to be our resident Nell this week and tell us that melodrama has no place in horror? Or, you know? <laughs> no, absolutely not. But I think that is a very uh, dated form of melodrama for horror films. It feel, it, It's one of the only things that places me in the early 2000s, which is when this film was made. Right, Matt, what did you think? Uh, well, you gave me the synopsis about two weeks ago when we were talking about uh, you making this podcast and so on. So unfortunately, I knew the reveal and I knew the ending. Mm. Uh, but, That's a shame. Uh, yeah, but it didn't make it any less uh, disturbing. And um, I wouldn't say I was ever terrified, but it is, it's that, that sort of indolent, creeping disturbance that, that came with a very powerful... Um, depiction of what I thought was a very non-physical threat mm -hmm. which is why I actually didn't like the water tank punching because I thought it gave her too much physicality yeah um, have you I ever agree. heard the word indolent being used on the podcast before no no indolent. I don't that's think first so it's really indolent. good to get fresh vocab and energy in here let's be indolent uh, word, of, word of the week um, but other than that um, it, purely I think by accident uh, I watched the Badabook uh, bada book, the bada book. A couple of weeks ago with you bada guys bada book. <laughs> and what intrigued me was that entirely accidentally we watched two films about psychology of motherhood yeah 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 uh, and there were I think were I to throw on my old humanity student hat they'd be something interesting to compare but to answer the question I really enjoyed it brilliant I'm not normally one for jumpy jumpy horror but this one definitely is appeals to me as a piece of actually a piece of art that explores something psychological. Mm. Heather, do you want yeah. to remind our listeners that we actually know it's not called the Babadook? Yes. <laughs> it's oh, the Babadook, oh. but we are not pro-correcting people because <laughs> normally it's me who pronounces well, things. We insist on quite at least one word being said incorrectly every episode. From actually. this point on, it shall, it shall forth and forever the be. Bada the Babadook? The Babadook. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> The scat man. I thought you were yeah, wanting to talk the, the about ba ba book. the yeah. timpani drums at the end of Dark Water. I wasn't sure. I was like, what are we talking about? <laughs> no, we all got it. And we ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 And I, I really enjoyed your... I really enjoyed your bringing up of the single mother thing. Yeah. I'm relating that to Badadook because I want to ask you guys about that, obviously. Ooh. You know? Mm -hmm. So... To facilitate talking about the nitty gritty, mm. when we get into the plot summary, plot I'm summary. just going to try and whip it. through it because there's so much we want to talk about. So, on to the plot summary. Spoilers and water about to be spilled. Also for copyright, I should say this is pretty much lifted from Wikipedia because it was too spooky to watch another time. Then I did watch it again. <laughs> Wikipedia's got... The back. summary, it's gone my back. Let's Fine. go. Well done. Okay, so Yoshimi Matsubara, in the midst of a divorce mediation, rents a rundown apartment with her daughter, Yukiko. She enrolls Yukiko in a nearby kindergarten and gets a job as a proofreader in a small publishing company. The ceiling of their apartment has a leak that worsens on a daily basis. Matsubara complains to the building superintendent, but he does nothing to fix it. When she tries to contact the apartment above, she gets no answer. Strange events then occur. A red bag reappears no matter how often Yoshimi tries to dispose of it. Here it is found in tap water. Yoshimi gets glimpses of a mysterious long-haired girl around the complex. She becomes a regularly late. She becomes reg Oh my goodness, I'm thrown by the Japanese it's names. It's too scary. <laughs> it's too scary, guys. <laughs> She's late to pick up her daughter, everyone, okay? And so she's very stressed when her ex-husband tries to take Yukiko. Several incidents remind her of the time she was abandoned as a child. When Yukiko sees the long-haired girl in a yellow raincoat, she becomes ill. Yoshimi discovers a flyer for a missing girl named Mitsuko Kawai, who had attended the same kindergarten as Ikiko, but disappeared about a year ago. Mitsuko had worn a yellow raincoat and carried a red bag. <gasps> Yoshimi discovers the apartment upstairs is Mitsuko's former apartment. One day, Yoshimi finds Yukiko in the apartment upstairs, discovering that the faucets have been left running and have flooded the entire unit. 
Yoshimi decides to move out, but her lawyer convinces her that moving now would weaken her position and gaining custody. Her lawyer talks to the superintendent, who finally agrees to fix the issue. After the ceiling is patched, things seemingly return to normal, but Yoshimi finds that the red bag has reappeared. She heads to the building roof and notices that the water tank was last inspected and thus opened over a year ago, the same day that Mitsuko was last reported seen. She comes to the horrific realisation via a vision that Mitsuko had fallen into the tank while trying to retrieve her red bag and drowned. Meanwhile, her ghost attempts to drown Ikuko in the bathtub. Yoshimi finds Ikuko unconscious. She grabs her and rushes into the elevator, fleeing from Mitsuko. But as the elevator door closes, she sees that the figure pursuing her is in fact her own daughter. She is actually carrying Mitsuko. Mitsuko claims Yoshimi as her mother in a torrent of water and Yoshimi realises that she won't let go her grip. With Ikuko watching tearfully, Yoshimi sacrifices herself by staying in the elevator to appease Mitsuko's spirit. Ikuko rushes to the floor the elevator stops at, but when the doors open, a flood of brown water rushes out and nobody emerges. Then, ten years later, Ikuko, now in high school, revisits the now abandoned block and notices that her old apartment looks oddly clean and lived in. She then sees her mother looking exactly as she did that fateful night and they have a conversation. Yoshimi affirms that as long as Ikuko is alright, she is happy. Ikuko pleads to live with her mother, but she apologises that they cannot be together. Mitsuko appears behind Ikuko. Ikuko turns but sees no one. When she turns back around, Yoshimi has also disappeared. Ikuko realises that her mother's spirit has been watching over her. Cue timpani drums. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And we're out. Guys, sorry for my wee stumbles there, but you know, it happens, right? So... It's a silence of disappointment. Um, we kind of already covered this, but why Why is this film so scary? I think you've all sort of explained why it was scary to you, but is there anything more to add there? Well, for me, uh, because we touched on the notion of the jump scare, and this film is certainly light on jump scares uh, in, in its kind of Hollywood sense. But uh, one thing I wanted to mention was how much more terrifying the 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 closed lift and the 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 closed door and the something that has to be done but is being but the that the the jump scare is essentially a long drawn out four or five or six second scare where you realize this this lead character is in peril mm-hmm. but also has no way of removing themselves from said peril and I, I find that far more terrifying in the mm-hmm. long run than a bloop, yeah. you know? And I guess that's a fitting sort of um, way of seeing the whole film, really, mm. isn't it? So I guess it is just this sort of long, drawn-out process of up to this to this final point. Yeah. Mm. I love this question of why is a film scary? It's my favorite thing to think about in terms of horror films. I actually want to start doing um, narrated videos for our channel where we'll talk about films and ask that central question, you know, why is it mm. scary? And um, for this one, I kind of want to get back to what Dav was um, incorrectly saying earlier about um, uh, this film being melodramatic. Um, that's not, that's, <laughs> I feel misrepresented, but go on. Yeah, so when, when Daff erroneously claimed that um, <laughs> the, the movie is melodramatic, I feel what he, uh, what he was really attempting to say was that this film uh, portrays a certain Japanese sensibility um, right. You know, and I think that there's a reason why this film, uh, so, you know, it's scary to me as a Westerner because at this same sort of period in time, 2003, um, you know, the UK was doing all right economically. Mm-hmm. You know, we're heading towards the 2008 crash. You know, things are doing, uh, you know, not great, not bad, but, um, you know, uh, at this period in time in still Japan. New la- still new Labour, Tony Blair. Blair O, um, yeah. the, the hair Blair. Bunch. <laughs> um, but, you know, at this time in Japan, st- you know, people were absolutely wrecked economically, right? We were talking about this last night, right? Yeah. Did we get, yeah, did we get that and verified? I, I really like that. I think it's interesting to think about a country's financial state and particularly a financial crash and how that relates to horror. 
um, because ContraPoint's YouTube channel sums up how the original gothic aesthetic came from uh, financial instability in America. So like the Victorian new mansion becoming a creepy space. Right. And then if you think about the decaying tower block, that could be something that's really creative with what's gothic, what's scary, or what ContraPoints also suggests is like malls that have been built Mm. and then subsequently contractors have pulled out there's not Mm. been enough money so like a half built empty mall like we can all see that as skating in the feed is lack of money and like financial failure so because the department is a is a is a is a failed new build Mm -hmm. but it is it has that yeah you're right it has that kind of gothic a decayed building to it. That's a really good. That's and the a great emptiness. Point. And for some reason, this tower block is super empty in dark water. Uh, we only see the two old ladies on the ground floor, but we and Mitsuko's ghost. Don't come for me. I know you live there, <laughs> but I don't know anyone else that lives there. Well, also, and it's huge. It's also the fact that you know when we flash forward ten years um, to when it is um, Ukiko is that her name? Ikuko. Ikuko. When she returns to the tower, when she returns to the tower block, I mean, it's totally derelict. It's totally derelict mm. to that point. So, and really, doesn't really, it doesn't look all that different to the way it mm. did ten years prior, apart from a couple of lighting strips. I think it's just good to down. renovate a creepy space. Like we've all seen a creepy mansion, you mm. know, we've we've seen it, but like let's have a hotter space of this century. And certainly, I think that. That's what's working for the film. So that's really skatey. I, I did want to say just one more wee thing, though. Like, I think there's a, another point that you can read into this where um, the creepy water monster is what... Now, I'm not going to pretend that I understand the sort of ins and outs of this, but within Japanese Shinto culture, yes. there's a, a thing that mm. I, I only know about this through Western scholarship. Um, you know, I can't read Japanese... Um, you know, I haven't read, you know, Shinto texts or anything. Um, so this is very much an approximation and it's coming from a guy called Sean Cubitt, um, who wrote about Princess Mononoke. Mm-hmm. Um, and that also Susan, uh, Susan Napier, who wrote about this kind of thing as well. Well, they talk about the idea of, of what's called a Shinigami. Shinigami. Yeah. And, um, it's like a, a spirit that, I guess, you know, you just call it an evil spirit, but I think the idea is that it's like a spirit that's got something left to do. Yeah. It's got some sort of desire left in the, in the I'm world. Of death note. I think so. It, it isn't, isn't a character actually called a Shinigami in Death yeah, Note? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously he, if you think is. about it in the ring, that's definitely a, a Shinigami. Right. As I think, I think that's the thing, but, but then in particular, this character of the, Oh, no, you're right, yeah. It's she's... a similar character. I think the director the, the works with this kind of thing a lot. Like, uh-huh. Well, what I was going to ask you guys about that is, like, um, I, I feel like we should bring up The Ring because, obviously, it's, like, canon J-horror preceding this by a few years, but also it's the same director. And there's the similarity as well, if you think about the single mother thing, um, separates from a partner and is kind of vulnerable. Nakata spoke about his theory that the success of a film rests for him and how it depicts relationships and that he prefers telling stories with female characters because he perceives them to have a stronger permeability to ambient environments. So he actually rewrote the main character of The Ring from the book to be a female. And then obviously his ghosts are female. So... Knowing that, like, what do you think about the family set up in dark water? What do you think about the young female ghost with with something to to resolve? Like, what about the stress of being a single mum? Like, what what does that do in the horror, and particularly the Japanese horror, for you? You're saying why? Like, why is it about women? Well, well, what, for example, what what's different about it? Like, what do you think? I mean, is achieved by making it about female characters, about making it about this this revenge female ghost. What are you asking here? <laughs> I don't get this question. Does everybody else get this question? I'm 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 tempted to bring up the fact that regardless of 
gender, I guess, there is a sort of, because this film is predominantly filled with, with female characters, that uh, Yashimi, her daughter and the ghost, there is this kind of sense of um, generational trauma that runs throughout, I think. I got that more last night, because I'll be honest, last night I got a wee bit confused. Do, do, do we find out... The, so there's sort of two, there's two different stocks of footage in this film. There's the yellow tinted mm-hmm. footage and mm-hmm. there's the blue tinted footage. And yeah. it's the yellow tinted footage always raincoat girl. Yes. Mexico, yes. That's always. Well, oh, well, actually, okay. no, it's not. Because I think the yellow tinted footage is just supposed to be the past, I think. The past. We do have, we, I mean, we do have Yoshimi's past mm. in yellow tinted um, footage as well when she's, been, when she's forgotten in her kindergarten. But then we also have Raincoat Ghost Girl. Meet Chan. Yeah, also in that kind of footage, but it's sort of no- notably kind of distorted. Right. Oh, so, we, we, so we get a bit of the mother's past as well. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get that the first time mm-hmm. watching it. I thought- there's, one, there's one great part where um, she, uh, Yoshimi is going for a job interview at the publishers. Yes. And um, she tries to make a phone call, and then we get a flashback of her as a child being left behind in the kindergarten. By a ringing her, phone. Yeah, yeah. And, a te- and a teacher picks up a ringing phone. We have this interesting sort of interlinking of scenes. I thought that was Mexico I thought that past. was Mexico. I don't think that was. No. When she was left alone that day. I was Because then she leaves it, and goes and climbs the water tank. Are you serious? I'm Deadly. confused. Really? We're losing our I, credibility I, here. I really thought that was Yoshimi. Well, that's okay. I always thought, Maybe both I always thought that Ghost there. Raincoat Girl was always wearing... Raincoat. Raincoat. A raincoat. Mm. And you never see her face. You never see her face. It's always distorted. <sighs> and and I, I also thought it was a sort of... It tied with her worry about leaving her own daughter yeah. alone at school. And yeah, she's yeah, remembering yeah. a time she was left There's alone There's that thematic school, resonance, so, yeah. definitely, yeah. That all works for me. And the school looks really similar to mm. the kindergarten. Yeah. The... Ikuko and Mitsuko go to, so... Have they been there for three I don't generations? Know. Who knows? But here, but to get back to the I mean, question... I, I, yeah, I, what I, am I asking I, you? I'm asking you why why the female characters, why, why, female? why okay, the so, single so, mum thing, so this, why, why is that scary? So, that, so this idea, this conflation between the characters, I think is really important, actually. There's almost a sort of deliberate conflation between the characters, because in some sense, they have a similar experience of, yes. of abandonment, right? Um... I don't necessarily know how that feeds into the significance of being a single mother. I guess one of the things I can think of is that um, paired with this idea of being in this modern gothic yeah. apartment block, um, she is, I don't know, like there's a, there's a feeling of abandonment of like powerlessness and of sort of, I mean, you, you mentioned this last night watching it, gaslighting. Mm. There's this idea that, I remember reading some review of uh, some piece that someone wrote about the game, the video game Prey from two years ago, 2017. Someone where you can either choose to play as a male or female character. Yes. And someone was basically writing this piece on Waypoint, I think it was, Vice's Video Games Vertical, about what the, the correct choice, you know, it was sort of hyperbolic, but the correct choice in that game is to, because it's a game about being gaslit and being presented this false history that the, there's this feeling that it's a that it's a thing that women face more often than men, perhaps. I think it's so good you recognise that. Like, there's a lot of gaslighting in this film. Mm. Yeah. Any time that her instinct Sorry says, I swiped your idea, Matt. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's all there, isn't it? And like, yeah, Matt was the first person to to call it what it is. Like, you know, any time her instinct says this is dangerous, I should just get the hell out. Mm. Her like life preserving instinct. It's challenged because it doesn't fit into like the current rational framework by the men in her life. You know, they're saying, mm, I get it, but rationality, logic, you should do this. And ultimately, she dies because of that. Do you know what? I've just realized I know something about this, and it might be something that's quite interesting. So, you know, the way we are sort of led to believe that um, Mitsuko's. Um, mother is it Mits- Mitsuko left her yeah Mitsuko's mother abandoned her yeah do you think she got trapped by a previous ghost and it's just oh, continued no. <laughs> a ghost in a sense 
I've realized that I know something about this. And what I know is that in that 10 year period, the lost decade of Japan, mothers actually did abandon their kids quite frequently. There's another uh, Japanese film about this that I had to look at in film studies. So um, one of the really scary things about being a, 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 a woman in this time uh, would be that if she was to um, abandon that home and try to move to another home, what the lawyer's saying to her it's kind of, it's almost more scary that he's not gaslighting her. He's mm. like, he's not trying to manipulate her for his own ends. He's genuinely trying to help her hold on to her daughter. Yeah. Um, if she does move, she will lose her daughter. You know, she, she may end up being financially destitute. She may very well become one of the lost generation. She may end up losing custody of her children. Her children may end up being abandoned. So it's like, it's almost what you're seeing with the with the raincoat child is like it's it's actually kind of literal when she says I am your mother at the end you know it's not just her saying I have to make the choice now it's her saying I very easily could have been your mother you yeah. know mm. I very easily could have been the one that ended up abandoning my child out yeah. of, out of social necessity Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's almost the, the more frightening reality of the situation is that, you know, women were being placed in these situations where they were having, or, you know, men and women, but predominantly women uh, were being placed in a situation where they were having to abandon their families due to the, the economic breakdown of Japan mm. during that 10 year period, you know. So, so yeah, I mean, it is something that's so specific to the story. Um, and then also in terms of the framing, how it serves to make those spaces so much more frightening just by having the aesthetically female body in a space, you know, the sort of the symbols of what a female body is to us as viewers still, you know, so that's something that may change in future. But at the minute, you know, the way we read the female form within a space is, you know, it has different signification. Um like what we were talking about last night, if it was Dwayne the Rock Johnson, mm. yeah, mm. yeah, 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 in this movie, it would I think be, you would have to rethink blocks, the architecture at the very least. In the West, like when like a council house would often be in a tower block, at least like mm. in Scotland, and I think that there's unspoken rules like you never use the elevator, that kind of thing. Like if you're a woman in that space or a woman with kids. Um, it's just dangerous to, and I know this isn't social housing. I know it's obviously Japan, but I think that like, I think it is. Do you think it's social housing? Yeah, I think it definitely. So that's why she's got so much support from the lawyer frequently through the film. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. And and her <laughs> her saying things like oh, yeah. why is there a leak why is it and, yeah. the, and, and the men uh, the concierge gentleman and um, the other chap who seems to be some kind of estate manager yeah. just say things like oh, it's an old it's an old building love yeah, yeah. kind of suck it up we we yeah, can't yeah, afford yeah, yeah. to deal with that and the th- issue on floor twelve and this and that we can only just afford to like re-plaster the facade. Yeah. Hearing you say all of this just makes me think I really want to see a northern English version of this film. Yeah. Well, it made me say last night how terrifying a horror film set in like a Glasgow high-rise would be oh, yeah, for all yeah, of those yeah. reasons. And like, I'd just be remiss not to mention that uh, I read a bit of the director talking about what he describes as like sort of bad energy from places, but I'm going to say bad vibes. <laughs> and um, when he was okay. making the ring, he was looking out and selecting those, like the weird field with the tree, uh, the, you know, traditional Japanese style rooms, very traditionally skatey things. Um, and he chose those because he says supernatural is within the natural. So, so whatever you want to take from that supernatural is is part of the natural. But then this is a sort of like, not necessarily unnatural space, but built up space and um, just more contemporary. And we've talked about that a wee bit and I, I keep coming back to it, but I don't know, like, where's the supernatural in the contemporary? Like, where where does it where does it go if it's not in a field if it's not um in an old house it could anything be kind of supernatural now the ghost asking for your wi-fi password (laughs) and and we'll come back to that like why is it so lame when it becomes digital like i feel like there's 
maybe we just have to work backwards a wee bit and we've still not made all the horror films in tower blocks. We've still not made all the shop and mall horror films. We're not quite ready for the the TikTok horror film. I don't... You know? <laughs> the TikTok horror film. I don't, I don't, I don't think we're film. ever ready for that. But well, I thought Unfriended was pretty good. I think it's just like spaces from the previous century. I don't think we've worked through them all yet with, mm. and tapped into what the horror is from them. I think the tour block was really powerful. This I just, I mean, I just I wanted to say still, that again. I think people are still working it out. And I mean... <laughs> I think mm. not to I not that I want to get too much into talking about hauntology. Yeah, you seems, do. No, we're well, not really. Mm. Okay, it I don't necessarily. Spook. No, I, don't. I didn't know we had Professor no, Spook th- in the just, room. I think no hauntology. I love hauntology. That's a great mm. collection. That that go, um, ghosts and monsters. What's it called? That Mark Fisher one. Oh no! Oh, well, that's the one I'm talking about. Oh, Mark Skillers, Fisher's version. But I, but I think oh, it does. Yeah. But I think it does. Um, feed itself quite like fit in quite nicely with with the idea of tower blocks because i mean i think what were tower blocks but a sort of clumsy but maybe not noble noble isn't the word but a way of housing people who couldn't afford housing i guess yeah i'm desperate to steal your point but keep going go go, go, go ahead i want to hear what you're going to say i think i had two two kind of points to make that were riffs on the the problem of the tower block as a social space and then as a a film subject or a film location Mm -hmm. You you got you 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 went there as in they were almost like a utopian social ideal in yeah. the beginning. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a JG Ballard film, yep. oh, uh, yeah. High Rise, is it? High Rise, yeah. and so that leapt into my sort of uh, comparative mental space, thinking, well, that was an ideal, uh, but was also a form of imprisonment for these people Mm -hmm. because that film also was laden with the idea of social cachet and the level level you you were inhabited on the uh in the tower block uh, um equated with your social and also the ghost lives above her in dark water yeah so and has this dominance over her so that Mm -hmm. is kind of present in dark water too yeah and my kind of my taking this i guess this comparison or this this uh reading of it to the nth degree would and informing and it being informed by what you said about tiktok i know we're joking about there being Mm. a tiktok horror but tiktok isn't a prison to us yet whereas particularly post grenfell tower blocks are prisons to to us and so we've not developed a a collective critique enough of of it yet to find it scary enough yeah 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 yeah, yeah. be imprisoned by tiktok this is the thing yeah whereas tower block I know loads of people who, who, you know, that, you know, 30 years old looking for a, a house to buy and they've got their mortgage and stuff and they just swipe past tower blocks because Hell they have yeah. this horrific association as a place of imprisonment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People in their sixties, I think in, in the UK who maybe got moved into one mm-hmm. when they were a child and it was, it was fresh and new and it was supposed to be great. And, and they've got this jaded relationship with them, I think. And also, I can't remember which theater said this, but they said that, especially in the UK, they literally look like filing cabinets mm. for the undesirables of society. You want to hide them away. You know, they can be so austere here. Like, at least the one in Japan has a sort of bit of a garden thing on it. But a lot of the first ones were just made to look like a box that you stacked as many people in as you could away from everything else. So I think we've we've all got to grips with how awful they were and then using them in horror is trying to process mm. that, maybe? And I mean, I'm not someone who knows hauntology very well, but I think there's this idea that it, this idea of it representing some kind of utopianism, but then becoming a sort of failed utopian vision it's human failure the idea of, the, the idea of living communally giving, living together is a utopian idea but then when you sort of place it in this space where people are living right above each other and i mean in the film there's no one we, we don't see many people in the building i think there is this sort of it's almost like it's Schrodinger, though. The, the building was probably full but we just yeah, never, that's right. we yeah, never yeah, saw yeah. them or yeah. they, they're only there if you open the door yeah and yeah see them in that in uh, habitat yeah you know it's interesting the, the, the idea that this is coming from Bauhaus philosophy um, mm-hmm. is, uh, that's correct right ba- Bauhaus that was so, the yeah. German idea for that the sort of predated all of this you know the interesting thing was is that um, these utopian housing projects were 
designed without consulting the people that would live in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so it's like there's always this... um, There had to be like a universal almost. There's this hand of the maker is constantly just off the side of the frame mm-hmm. almost you know what i mean it's mm-hmm. like definitely so that what i was saying earlier but like the pressure of the uh, social housing you know meaning that that's something that the female characters actually have to deal with and, and that they're kind of the sword of damocles is hanging over them in the same way that is actually represented in the building itself you know this is no one would have designed a building. None of the residents would have designed a building yeah. to look mm-hmm. like this. Yeah, none of the designers live in the tower blocks. Yeah. Right. Really good. Yeah. But then so specific to Japan and like what makes this a horror that's kind of catering to the Japanese audience. I want to talk a bit about um, the J-horror genre. And the director Nakata said the style is all about how the characters have relationships to people dead and alive, to inanimate objects and folklore and their living spaces, he says. There is no clear definition to all this, but the Japanese often attach their darkest emotions and fears to seemingly trivial phenomena. This is the secret to making really scary movies on a very low budget. So I'm thinking about, he's talking about living spaces and them being ascribed a kind of aliveness. Um, He's talking about how inanimate objects can seem alive in the J-horror genre. So immediately I thought of the red backpack, Mm -hmm. which keeps coming up. Mm. Um, And so I just wanted to talk about the inanimate objects moving on from the living space and kind of their potential to be terrifying and if you think that that's something you've just picked up from this film and other J horror films do you think that this is something in maybe other horrors you've seen that works or are the Japanese just well, really good at it? Like I, I'm going to pronounce it wrong again, but the the, the Baba 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 <laughs> she goes as far as <laughs> yeah, she so goes as far as to that. tear the book apart, and right. it then returns remade. Now the mm-hmm. you know maybe it would have been one step too far, one kind of hammy um, directorial choice for for the director of this film to make her literally take scissors to the red back. No, I'm so something. glad you've you've even uh, thought about but this. But she just kept throwing it away and it just kept coming back. But the back. reason yeah. why is I think in Japan if you touch the haunted object or the or the right. object it can latch onto you mm-hmm. like there's this credence given to things that are inanimate. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you think about the Babadook, she enacts the fantasy that she could be powerful enough to destroy it. Yeah. Whereas the mum in dark water doesn't even go there. She knows how powerful it is. She won't she doesn't even want to touch it. Yeah, so there was so, no thread in this film of her saying, if I just uh if I just tell myself it's a rat moving upstairs, right. then it goes away. Whereas obviously the Bababook um, <laughs> was was just dripping with the kind of her mythologizing this creature. Yeah. Or try well, I suppose trying to demythologize it. So yeah, well, no, it doesn't exist. So that endeavor, I think, is present yeah. in Western movies. Mm. Like, what's the stupid m- monkey thing Give from the Insidious films? Or, like, yeah. I feel like people try to go, like, ah, oh, and toss it away or, or cut it up or set fire to it. But I think in the J Horror, there's like a kind of social, like, belief around scary objects and how you shouldn't even interact with them at all, mm-hmm. even to so, try to get control over things. This probably extends to interactions with the supernatural in general because i mean the ending of the film there's no hope in the end that the ghosts can be can, the ghost the ghost will go away the only hope is yeah. that the mother has to sacrifice herself in order to save her daughter yeah there's, like, no, there's no happy no, ending there's really. no tearing this thing apart there's no destroying it it's just it continues to, to be placated but it was an uneasy piece though would you not yeah, say yeah yeah no like i would it, say that it but it's a realization, like, realization she comes to towards the yeah, end i guess but definitely yeah. just a pyrrhic a pyrrhic conclusion you know mm-hmm. she lost her mum but then it's the first time we've piece. mentioned <laughs> fer- ferism <laughs> Uh, on on this channel as well. That's, that's Again, great. delighted to have you. Word Matt, the, like mm, <laughs> second word of the week, uh, mm-hmm. fantastic. Here, no, I, I just I wanted to drop another wee knowledge bomb uh, on this thing. Um, trivia, I don't know. Um, do you know what a kami is? No. Um, that's not me saying okami in a Northern Irish kami. accent. 
Um, I, 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 it's in there somewhere. Right. Somebody needs to grab a wee horn or something and stop me when I'm, you know, being culturally appropriated, um, <laughs> you know, when I'm overstepping my bounds here. But, but basically, like, uh, kami is um, something that we can't really understand in the West because we're going to try and ascribe it a term like God, which isn't isn't really correct but akami is kind of the um the awe inspiring spirit of any and all objects mm-hmm. um so uh, a mountain can be akami but it's not that the mountain has a spirit form or something you know you don't have the spirit this is in of shinto, the mountain is that right this is shintoism yeah. yeah exactly it's it's that the mountain itself and the kind of the, the awe inspiring feeling that it gives is kami now that of course is just one one reading that comes from uh, a, a, an english interpretation of their spiritual text the kojiki i'm pretty sure it's called kojiki um so um a, a very young connor McKeown used to write about kami <laughs> until he realized that he was um, being a he was just just bordering on the on the um you know the positive form of racism yeah yeah <laughs> You guys are so cool. Yeah. Like, that's that's still racist. Yeah. My best friend is black. I love Jay Z. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, my best friend is is Japanese. Or I yeah. wish my best friend was Japanese. Um, I love Gundam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I was that guy. I was a massive weeb. Um, so was. <laughs> so what's Akami hen? So that's so Akami is like the the awe inspiring. Uh, element of an object and that, and that that is a sort of thing within itself, you know? So when people pray to the kami of a fox, they're not praying to like what we would call the god of foxes or something. Mm-hmm. It, it is literally to the material fox itself. It's, it's an appreciation of the kind of um, semi magic qualities of material things, like you know, animism. But is that is the that and every fox a conduit for that sublime feeling? No, they, yeah, they and they all have one. Yeah, yeah that's okay. The thing. So ah. there's so there's there's lots and lots of kami, and then there are like all there are higher kami okay. above that, like um, Amaterasu, the uh, like sun, bigger fox god. Oh my yeah. god! I was just thinking about <laughs> the materiality of the different things in the movie. I'm like, right, 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 and then I remembered that. Ikuko builds a tower block with her Lego. She does. She never. She what? does. Actually, there's a few scenes where she's building something. She's blocks. building these big tower, tower blocks kind of vibe. I just thought that was cool. No, it's very cool. But then the, the sort of tension comes here from people going, right. So so I mentioned Sean Cubitt earlier. Sean Cubitt's reading of this Kami and Shinto thing was that he was saying that it's like a philosophy of the natural. And I think that um, Miyazaki Hayo would say, you're talking out your arse, Sean. It's got nothing to do with nature. It instead is this, it's, it's materialism. So the tension kind of arises then in asking, can a wee plastic bag with a rabbit on it, can that be a kami? Oh, uh, okay. Mm. Oh, mm. perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to know. Like just with this director talking about how, yeah, so the supernatural is part of the natural, but really the natural is also the tower block. Like the natural is material. Yeah, and and it's all materiality. So, like, yeah, the wee red bag it, can it, be it, supernatural it, as well. It can be cami. It has a force to it. Now, I, I just want to sort of stop here and, and say that, like, I once I delivered a paper on this at a at a film conference, uh, SCMS oh. in Seattle. Story time with Connor. <laughs> Uh, I delivered a film paper on this and um, a really nice academic in the audience said, that was a great paper. This whole theory of Kami that you're developing. And, uh, you know, already I was, whoa, whoa. Oh, yikes. <laughs> um, this theory of Kami you're developing is so interesting. Do you think this could be applied to non-Japanese contexts? Mm-hmm. And I, I stared my postgraduate research in the face, <laughs> knowing that I need to say, Yes, <laughs> like let's apply this to everything and give me several books to write. Yeah, and instead I just had to be honest and say, no, this is a Japanese thing. I think it's yeah, a Japanese right. thing for sure because, like, yeah, just like Matt said, like in the Babadook, you know, she's trying to. Sorry, what was it called? Babadook. Babadook. Oh, okay, excuse yeah, me, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, she's trying to rip it up and that kind of thing, and that that just shows that we don't have the same like reverence respect weightiness around objects i I think i i i i totally agree 
Yeah. But I think there are um other examples there maybe are examples that we could pull that up. You, you can drag out of the, mm. the English canon. And the only one that springs mm. to mind immediately is how you cannot destroy the one ring. Oh, unless, you know, it can be thrown good. away, yeah? but it will find its way back to its master. Now, this is not a horror uh, kind of uh, trope, but it's like it, it is imbued with some kind of uh, spiritual significance that stops it from some or agency, immaterial agency stops yeah. it from being destroyed. It keeps yeah. finding its way back. It's got this kind of malicious intent that no one can really understand. And then obviously it can only be destroyed where it was made. So, That's a I really mean, good point. And I like the world of Lord of the Rings for the West. Mm-hmm. I like that for us. Like, I think it, there's so much culture, obviously, in, in Tolkien that mm. he's created. And so I yeah. think that it does imagine this like fantasy world where we did have that kind of like respect for... Yeah, and it's also not the first sort of objects. magical token to be thrown away by a hero in a story. You know, yeah. Tangle, mm. exactly. Yeah. The, the the sword in the stone, the sword in the lake, King Arthur, etc., etc. Ad infinitum. Tokens. But but they're always special items. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. So this is mm-hmm. this is the difference between collectivism. Ach, yeah, and it's not a special you know? item yeah. in, in a in a lore sense. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a random item. It's sitting in the lost stone fine box, mm-hmm. but. Just because it's random doesn't mean it's not powerful. Then maybe it's mundanity imbues it with yeah. a lot more horror as well. Like it's just uh-huh. a kid's school bag. Is there an know? Eastern Western tension in the film? Like you know, the when the old guy behind the counter sees the bag of toys, he over he, he turns it out and he wants to give the toys to the wee kid. And do you think oh, that's yeah, kind the, of a Western the, thing the to mom, do? The mum does the whole no no don't touch the yeah. thing. Am I am I right? Am I reading too much into that? Well, I don't know. You know I mean, what? That- the toys in the bag reminded me of McDonald's toys, mm. like Happy Meal toys. Are all like these plastic toys, like the same kind of size, like Which uh, is collectivism in market form. You know, right? Like there was so there was some kind of like aspect to it, yeah, where it was like, oh, you know, just take them, and the mum was like weighty of that. You could maybe read that as like a wee I, Western thing. I, I don't know. I wouldn't think so. I think that only really serves to amplify the tensions between the mother and the building and the people who run the building. She just doesn't trust them. Well, this because there is this sort of almost magical haunting, haunted quality about all the people who run the building. That they're in some way... Adam's family-like or something, yeah. Well, maybe not Adam's family-like. But oh, like, sorry. But, uh, but they have some kind of knowledge. Like, they... they maybe unconsciously want to undermine her in some way. There's something a tiny bit sinister about every yeah, there single is a little bit one of them, sinister, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's very telling that, you know, as soon as the lawyer turns up and goes into her room and then sees, oh, you know, didn't you have multiple occasions to sort of correct this damp patch? And suddenly everything starts to crumble and go, oh, crap. Yeah, it's like the maliciousness of the negligence. Yeah, yeah. Like, just negligence itself can become but it was like thinking about malicious like and the, terrifying. The natural and the supernatural. Like, there is something kind of horrifyingly supernatural about, you know, bureaucracy. A well, bad, like, the, like the unwillingness a, an to overwhelmed, do something. Yeah, yeah, admin sheet. Yeah, yeah. Or log sheet. Guys, we've discussed so many good things. There's maybe just one area that we've we've touched upon, but mm. I'm really keen to come back to if that's okay. And um, it's TikTok. No, I mean, I'm joking, but I'm kind of not because basically... Actually, no joke, I spent about two hours last night watching TikTok compilations oh, and mate. I don't know why. Do, we don't want to know that. I just want to know what the kids are up to I these know, days. I tried, but listen, the director released a film last year called Sadako where a ring-style cursed ghost is passed on, but this time via a YouTube video. Oh, yeah. You so see, yeah. the film has been panned and I haven't seen it, but I should say that I may well love it. But just based upon what we've talked about before, Matt was very astute with the fact that we've not yet fully criticised digital spaces, which is why they can't be horror. Um, would Dark Water work in 2020? And if it was made in 2020, would you would you just leave it as it is? Would you change anything? Like, is it risky to add the digital into this story? Like, what what do you think? Well, I mean, mm. I, I don't know. I think that 
with the digital, it seems like we're still working out what's horrifying about the digital. Right. Really. So you could do this film in 2020 and just, yep. just leave it, and, right? And yeah. all, all that would change maybe is that the mum would get her smartphone out, take pictures of all the damp patches. Show them and to the superintendent them, and he wouldn't email her back or yeah, something. And he would be like, well, yes. what, how can you prove that was taken today? Yeah. yeah. So there's just or, a slight update on her yeah. tech, but nothing that changes mm-hmm. the phenomenon really. Yeah. Do you know one, one thing I love about phones uh, being shite <laughs> is that, um, you know, in any film at any point when someone gets their phone out, you know, when it's like when a phone call would save everybody. And the only thing the writer needs to do is have them go, oh, no signal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they're not the Deus Ex Machina that people feared they would be. It's yeah, just you know, mm. and everyone in the audience goes, "Yep, been there." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you on? A, are you on a contract with three? But I guess yeah. Like returning to this idea, I don't know, data. We, we, like we don't, we don't yet know exactly the full extent of how technology can be horrifying. I guess because I mean, I'm thinking about Unfriended. The thing that's really horrifying about that film is the anonymity that online harassers can sort of hide behind i guess we saw um heather and i we saw a, a joke um digital horror film you remember that one it was it was an app that killed you you, you, you oh was yes it where, was it like the bet you it told to bet you when you were gonna to die <laughs> oh, no no, no right. it was a countdown timer of yeah. when you were gonna die and what it was like was this called but, but the, here's the thing so so that's all fine and well that's that's really scary but the mechanics are that well, how does this even work? Like, it's in the code. It's like the app contains a ghost that yeah, is released when you download do it. With the app. It's, it's weird because, like, knowing when you die has been a obviously in the ring. It's like a it's through a videotape, and we can like mm. suspend our disbelief with that. But there's something about it being like in your iPhone code that's just kind of funny. Isn't it? Like, yeah. it's not really scary. I mean, did you think it worked? I mean, it worked as a as a horror comedy. It was funny. That's the thing. It's it, kind of funny. Like, oh, shit, I can't delete the yeah. app. It won't let me delete it. You know? I'm pretty which sure it was called in, Countdown. Or- which Countdown. in the okay. latest season in Rick and Morty, they pillory quite well with the dating app that yeah. uh, Jerry develops with the alien. Yeah. And they all just delete to make it. An app. The minute, yeah, the minute that they put Add wall, pe- paywall on it. They all then just People delete it. The problem, it. Yeah, the problem goes right. away, and it's immediately <laughs> the pin is popped in the balloon, the, the the horrifying balloon of this app. Now, I do want to say a wee thing in defense of Sadako. Like, so Sada, Sadako in. Have you the, seen it? Uh, no, I've seen it in my mind, oh. which is good enough. I'm, no, I'm, just I'm a, really excited to see it. Can yeah. I just say? But I had a little look, and and people aren't that impressed with it, and that's. They're not true believers. That's it, really? Um, yeah. Like, Sada, Sadako's powers in the ring have always been uh, her ability to um, imprint pictures psych- uh, te- telepathically, you know. And mm-hmm. there's a whole thing about this. There was, like, a, a medical fraud that was actually done in, in the, I think, early 1900s where people were able to print pictures with their mind. So it's picking up on this, um, you know, medical legacy thing. And I remember watching the film and I remember saying to you guys, you know, she's the original YouTuber. Mm-hmm. You know, she all she wants is more likes and follows. You know, she, she just oh, wants to spread her content. You, yeah. only, you only die if you don't like and subscribe. Yeah. You have like, to share the, the video. Yeah. yeah. You just need Which to Which way is the same thing with this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. You need to like or subscribe to Spookbox or you will die <laughs> in seven days, you know? Um, so, you know, that's the thing. So I think that it, it was kind of always built into the ring that there's this like sharing. It, cause the, the, the ring was about uh, globalization. The viral, the viral right? The, yeah. yeah. The, 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 the viral possibility of videotapes. Mm-hmm. So then extending that further to the viral content of, of the digital. Well, I think the only thing that's unfortunate about that is that it's already so well on understood you know Mm. it may be that there's nothing frightening about the digital because the digital is something that is so scary but we still use it yeah Mm. you know we know that viruses have uh, abounded we know that you know donald trump was elected for the lulls you know Mm -hmm. we we know that there's you know russian and chinese uh, interference with global politics made possible via the internet Mm. but we still put all of our personal and private data on there you know, we we. So you think we've got a lack of like autonomy when it comes to it, which actually means that it's not got a potential for horror. Because if you find a tire block, Skitty, you could just not move into one. But 
you can find YouTube scary, but you're still going to use it. Like you're yeah. kind of trapped into using all of these things in a way. It's like trying to make a horror about somebody moving in with Satan. Like, you know, like, so you're saying the internet's too overpowered. You're reading my sitcom scripts again. <laughs> is, it, is it that the digital is too OP to be? No, it's that it's terrifying. You know, we, we, we know it's scary. Yeah, we know the right. internet's scary. We know it's, it's, it's ruining the world, basically. We know it was a big mistake and we continue to use it. You mm-hmm. know, that, and, and that's the thing about the internet. You can't make that scarier than it already is. Oh my God. I've yeah, got right. it. I've got it. It's what? because horror films are escapism. And if the horror was like about the digital world, it wouldn't be escapism. Yeah. <laughs> It'd just be depressing. It's just real. You know? It's just real. Imagine someone could get your information off the internet, come to your house and murder you. Oh, oh no, wait, that totally already happens. Yeah. It's called doxing. Mm. Whoops. But then what that requires is someone to be creative with it. You know. Jordan Peele. And maybe did. just nobody's well, been that creative. Jordan Peele. That's, that's all I want to say is I don't think anyone's been creative with yeah. it. Like Sadako is the ring, but mm. through a YouTube video, whereas there was something really special about that being the first time we saw a vcr used that way yeah. we've already seen it and now it's just kind of like updated to the youtube video so it doesn't say anything particular about the youtube video if you see what i mean yeah i think what i'm drawn to comparing it to is to uh, think about black mirror and a number oh, of times yeah there's a lot of failures the whole kind of isn't technology scary god i hate and, charlie brooker man. and in particular the episode where bryce dallas howard plays oh movie, yes you get sort of like well the, the, the social credit system basically in an episode yeah, see oh, yeah, 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 it's yeah. the chinese and, social credit and you, system yeah, and you watch it and you go well it's already happening it literally is uh, in place, you know, certain and, people and can't just, portray And I'm kind of denatured to it a wee bit. Yeah. Yeah. There are people on earth who already, I mean, and we discussed it yesterday, there's already, we don't have a social credit system that's been formalized, but yep. there are already, already in the UK, there will be some people who want to buy a house and for whatever reason, the mortgage lender or the estate agent will just make their paperwork disappear. Mm-hmm. Like they're, they are not allowed to buy this house and they will just get an email that says, oh, sorry, uh, we got a better offer or whatever, you know. So in it should be scary. Yeah. But because... No, it, it is scary, but mm, it's real. It exactly. is happening all the yeah, time. Right, so yeah. all you can do is but, document but I feel no, the internet I know. I feel no peril at the, at the problem. You know, honestly, I think the scariest thing that you could do with something based on the internet would be something that the internet... You know, like, imagine things that people willingly do on the internet and then that coming out of their control. Like, you know, your manipulation of your sense of self, which is something that people engage with on the internet. You know, if that began to get corrupted without your will, so mm-hmm. that your, you know, the the distinction that you feel between reality and the digital, if that began to be corrupted by some unforeseen force, so that when you you know, when you started to claim that you, you know, went to the best party last night, that then everyone in your reality, you know, had memories of your being in that party that you didn't have. You know what I mean? If, if yeah, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. that that's something that maybe hasn't been tapped into. Like, we still think we're in control of whether we're logged in or not or on mm. the, and using the digital yeah. space. But then something that manipulated... The idea of control over that. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah, I think that's just it. Is that like, I'm loving this critique of the Tower Block. I can think of other movies like from recently, like Vivarium that critiques the suburbs and estate agents. Like, I think that we're nailing critiquing 20th century spaces right now. And I think it's just going to take a wee bit of time to... Mm critique this period i don't think it's happening just yet but like the great thing about dark water is that it's still relevant today totally you know Mm. yeah i agree with that is there anything else anyone wants to add do you think we've got everything i've got a question Uh uh-huh who'd win in a fight (laughs) mitchan or sadako sadako's relentless and like has telekinesis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Mitch Chan also can, fast. Mitch Chan can punch uh punch. She apparently. can punch metal. Yeah. And she's got really grippy wee I fingers. Really, I really did not like that they left that in there. Uh, the punch in so the I'm metal. I'm choosing to believe that they didn't put it in there. <laughs> 
<laughs> was it really that bad? bad? I don't know. It just really took me out of it. I don't know what it was. <laughs> um, could, surely, I think Sadako can like burn stuff as well. Yeah, Sadako's like psychic. Sadako is totally gonna. She's gonna whip yeah, this. Yeah, definitely. So on that note, then are we all gonna go watch Sadako right now and cover it in a week or two? Absolutely. We're gonna watch it. We're gonna forward it to someone, and then they're gonna die in seven days. <laughs> I just want to be proved wrong. I want a YouTube curse to be skatey. So let's let's go do it. Let's hope what's gonna happen. All right. Mm. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you, especially to Matt for joining us. Yeah, cheers. Have thanks you been lot, converted to horror? Um, if. Well, yeah. If if it was films like this that actually are artistic and good, <laughs> then I think that's there's fair. a lot in yeah, it, isn't lot. there? Yeah, I'm there's a lot for it. Mm. The 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 cortisol surge that wrecks my adrenal glands is only temporary. So <laughs> <laughs> you're go- you're going to recover in a couple yeah, of hours. That's your yeah, that's t-shirt. That's definitely <laughs> that's the first spook box t-shirt. Awesome. <laughs> what are we covering next week? Gosh, you know it's my turn. I don't know yet. I'm still torn between. <sighs> Got a couple of ideas. All right, okay. So it's there. gonna be a it's gonna be it a might shocker. be a funny one. Parts carry. <laughs> How did you know? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Kind of want to do Shaun of the Dead at some point. Yeah, maybe, maybe next something week. a bit lighter. Yeah, something a bit lighter. Yeah, I'm interested in the idea of comedy horror and whether you know we can find mm. something in that. To be honest, because I know that you you're wanting to do um, one cut of the dead at some point. I am I'll probably yeah. the week after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know something like that. Anyway, yeah. Well, we'll look at. Yeah, it we'll see. Like we'll that. see about it. Yeah. Awesome. Don't like forget. and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks for listening. We love Bye. you. Bye.